big news yesterday, Eric Spolstra, multiple reports coming out. He has signed a long-term lucrative extension with the Miami Heat. And uh, let's talk about all of the things with uh, the great Ron Rossi. And you can see tonight on Bally Sports Sun. They get their coverage going at 7 o'clock with pregame action. And you can see the coach there. Coach, appreciate the time. Thank you so much for joining us uh, today. Good morning, Brendan. How you doing? I'm doing great, Coach. Uh, your reaction where, when uh, when you get the news that Eric Spolstra is locked up long term with uh, with the the organization? I don't think it's a surprise that they'd want to keep him around, but you know the numbers get out there. His biggest, most guaranteed to a coach long term. I guess just how proud are you of a guy that you've been around for a very long time to see him get to this point? Well, first of all, <clears throat> I think it, it's. Uh... It's no surprise, and it's, he's, he's earned everything he's gotten, he's earned through his hard work, his dedication, his commitment to his professionalism. Um, no one is more deserving, and I couldn't be happier for him. And why not? I mean, you look at the other numbers around the league, so why shouldn't he get it? Are you kidding? I mean, <laughs> um, what else does he have to do? <laughs> you know, I mean, he's just – he's been fabulous. He's done a great job, and the organization this is, is not run by people who don't know what they're doing. They've proven it for 25-plus years, and uh, they just want to make sure it's in a steady hand, and it, it will be. It, it, was there a, a certain moment or, or story that you have, Ron, <laughs> where you, know, you first meet Spo as he's coming up or maybe, you know, in his first year uh, on his staff when he gets the, the head job where you're like, oh, this kid's, this kid's going to be the real deal. Well, you never know how it's going to pan out. But there was no question in my mind he was ready and deserving. That, that was clear. And, um, you know, someone had said to me one time, well, you think he's, you know, think he's ready? I mean, so my, my response was, <clears throat> what box doesn't he check? What hasn't he done to prepare himself for this job? And they couldn't answer that. I said, so, you know, it's about time he, ha he had the opportunity. I mean, if you go back, I, I mean, Pat will even admit to it years ago when he first got started, <clears throat> he wasn't sure he was ready. They sort of pushed him through the door, you know, and, uh, when people get a job for the first time, how can you predict what's going to happen? Some people will tell you they, 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 they did or they, or they could, and I say, well, good for them. I, I can't tell you that. We were talking, uh, we were talking about this uh, a little bit earlier in the hour, but do you, I, think it was, uh, I think it was the year they, they had the turnaround midseason where they go, I think, 30 and 11. And I, I think this was the year where, you know, the Nets didn't play – everybody that had no reason to say everybody i remember you being really pissed about that on television and and spo was just beside himself because he really cared about that team that looked like maybe this was gonna be the first time you'd have to think about like pulling the plug on a on a heat team just what what does he think that says about his care even in a, maybe a team that doesn't have a shot to get to the finals that he just always puts that kind of emotion into it well that's what you do every day with your job that's what he does every day with his job <clears throat> Every day he, with his job, he goes in to try and make his team better. And he's always searching for ways to make himself better. I mean, I know that for a fact. And it's, it's if you want to call it heat culture or whatever you want to call it, that's the way he operates. He's always operated that way. I doubt if it'll ever change. It's, you know, it's professionalism. It's you show up and you do your job to the best of your ability, and you try and figure out how you can make yourself better. Even if it's just <clears throat> that one day, okay, let's maintain. Let's make sure we're sharp. Let's make sure we know what we're doing. <clears throat> but every day, somehow, some way, see if you can make yourself better, make your team better. And that's what he's been, always been about. Talking to Ron Rossi, and you guys, of course, can watch tonight. Bally, Sports, Sun, Heat, and Thunder here tonight. Uh, what are the things, Coach, that you you see, I guess, of a Spo now? Like, now that 
now that like the everybody's kind of realized, oh, he's one of the greats, and you know he's proven himself. The noise used to be there like so loud, people didn't realize how good he was. But do you see, I guess, a more confident Eric Spolstra these days as a, as a as opposed to Big Three era Spo? Like, what is the difference like, between the guy now and and the guy who was you know probably in the midst of when things were loudest against him? Well, if I had it point to one thing, I, I would simply say experience. Experience breeding uh, confidence because he understands and knows what works and what doesn't work. And do you think it's, uh, like, from from a, a player perspective, like, do you feel like he's changed in the way that he talks to guys with the more experience that he gets? Or it, has that has that also, you know, stayed pretty consistent throughout his time? I would say it probably has stayed pretty consistent throughout his time. Um, I haven't been in the locker room in 10 years, so I can't tell you. Um, but from everything I can gather and from what I, uh, I'm talking to people, he's the same guy, maybe a little bit more um, – confident in what he wants to do but even back in the day <clears throat> when he first started and i can go back to one of the years in the of the big three it might have been the second year um there was uh i think in, in the playoffs that year um where i think he he had uh, when and we were down and it, it, we were on the road and uh, we were facing a lot of adversity and i thought at that point in time that was maybe year four of his tenure. Uh, I thought he had a, a defining moment back then. And uh, I think he really, at least in my mind, it was like, okay, this is this, you really, you really knocked it out of the park today. And I told him that. But there's been plenty of moments over the course of the years. Look, you're an NBA coach. You had 82 games. You're with a team for six, seven, eight months. Uh, you know, there's going to be ups and downs, and there's always going to be challenges. Uh, coach, swinging to uh, to this year's team, I was very excited this last game getting to see uh, Nikola Jovic. You know, <laughs> get uh, get you know he started to get some some run with the team, but also. You know, he just fell the back the box score kind of everywhere. You, you could feel his teammates really rally behind him. Spo, you know, has said this is, has to not be a microwave. It has to be a slow, slower process because he's so young. But it was great to see that kind of get rewarded it with him performing the way that he did and, and having those kind of in-between plays. What have you uh, made about uh, Nikola and his uh, his play as of late? And, and, and how do you think this can continue to develop this year? First of all... <laughs> I think as the 27th pick in that draft, that's an incredible steal because this kid's got some talent. He's got real offensive skills and size. Um, 6'10", 6'11", he can handle like a guard. He's a really, really good passer. And he can shoot it. I mean, he put it on the floor. This kid's got offensive ability. His challenge going forward, from, and it's been a challenge and will continue, he's going, to, he's going to thrive offensively. He's going to be a very, very good offensive player. Um, where he's got to grow the most is at the defensive end. And I already see some growth there. And, and Spoh's right. That kind of if – you're, you're, if you're to chart a young player, very few of them just start at one point and go continually up. You know, it's peaks and valleys. You raise, you plateau, you may drop a little, then you start going back up. Um, that's just normal. That's just part of the process, and it will take some time. But <clears throat> uh, I think our scouting department, our front office, <laughs> yeah, we really got lucky. They did a remarkable job. Well, was lucky the kid was there at 27, but our guys knew who he was. <clears throat> and um, I think you're starting to see it uh, you know, come to fruition. When, when a guy is that offensively talented, but he has the the challenge, his particular you know things that he's got to work on on defense. Do you is it is it the speed? Is it just thinking the coverage, coach? Like, what do you think of the things that are just 
that he's he's coming to grips with that once he does, he'll get more consistent time throughout his years? Well, first of all, you have to accept the mindset. Physically, he's he's pretty good. I wouldn't say he's a great athlete. I wouldn't I wouldn't call him a high flyer, but he's he's uh, he's pretty he's he's a pretty good athlete. And he has enough physical skills to become, if not an adequate, but somewhat better defender. <clears throat> what starts with a mindset and the, and, the, and the willingness to open up and accept teaching and coaching and understand and study. You've got to study. You've got to watch film. And then you've got to drill it. And then you've got to put it to work. And then you have to be able to stave the course in spite of your mistakes and go through the, the, the pain of growing. It's not easy, and it will take some time, but it's getting there. I see it happening already, and uh, I think it's just going to be a matter of time. The other thing that was, uh, that was really interesting after that game, you know, Kevin Love's been on a hell of a run here, Coach, and he's also a guy who's been an established all-star. I think Spoh referred, like, he's a guy. And and you're starting to see, like, it shouldn't be a surprise that Kevin Love can put up numbers like this off the bench. But, you know, you, you, people in Cleveland, they, they kind of cast him aside. And, and he comes here and, you know, has his role with us last year. But it feels – does he does he look more comfortable to you this year? Does he feel like he, he fits in even more this year? Because this is, this is a, a hell of a run Kevin Love is on right now. Yeah, first of all, his per-minute numbers are off the charts. I mean, it's, he's incredibly um, efficient, number one. Uh, shooting, rebounding, assists, his outlet passes. But his overall feel and knowledge of the game, his experience, um, he, he's a help to the younger guys also. And, yes, I think he, you know, he came in the, you know, during the season last year, didn't have a training camp with us. He's been around a little bit longer. But he's been around long enough to understand what works and doesn't work. And – but it takes no matter how long you've been around. When you go to a new situation, it takes a little while to settle in. He has settled in. Um, he's definitely more comfortable, and um, I think he. I think he <clears throat> now feels comfortable enough to be that veteran guy who can help lead, and um, that 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 time spent and the experience. And, you know, the, the, the ability or the chance to play with these guys and grow together, I think all fits into what's happening with him now. And, boy, he's been terrific. He really has. And, you know, the other thing was, let's face it, he's not asked to play 36, 38. You know, we, he's playing 20, 23, 24 minutes, 18 minutes. So <clears throat> he come off the bench and give everything as – you know, later in your your career, it's not that easy to play 36, 38 minutes. So this is sort of like a perfect fit. How much concern do you have, Coach? Uh, it looks like Kyle might miss a little time. He had that, that finger injury last game. Do you think that this roster can handle not having the, the traditional point guard for a little bit? I think he can always handle most things for a little bit. But what's a little bit, and then when does the long haul settle in? And then you start to miss the little things that that particular player might bring to you. And sometimes it's just it's an opportunity for someone else to step in and grow, and you don't necessarily miss that player. So, but you know, you got guys like Kyle and Jimmy who've been around and been so successful and are so good. If you miss them long enough, it's going to hurt. There's just no two way, unless all of a sudden somebody's just going to step forward and be that guy. And you know, you you don't want to have to go there. You'd like to you'd like to go with what's known. That has a tendency to work better. Before we get you out of here, Coach, uh, I wanted to play some sound for you. I don't know if you did. You see last night the the Raptors coach go off on the Lakers, getting a bunch of free throws in the fourth. Uh, you know what? Someone sent it to me, <clears throat> and my text back to my friend who sent it to me was, "I feel his pain." <laughs> <laughs> 
So yeah, he goes off. Like, have you have you ever been that incensed, Coach? Where like you feel like th- this is not fair. You're seeing a team twenty three to two or whatever it is in a fourth quarter, where you you just have to sound off like that. Have you ever gotten to that breaking point? What do you think? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> Especially, especially if you coach an expansion team for three years, oh man, you get you get zero. Well, actually, I, I didn't go off until year three. You know, I just got a lot of technical fouls the first two years, and then my wife threatened to kill me if I got any more because they were expensive. <clears throat> and then, so I kept them in. And then one night, it was in February. I, I remember it distinctly it was in February of my third year and we were playing the Pistons and we were playing well in February was the only time in my three years we had a 500 month and we played really well and lost a tough game against the Pistons and I went off after the game for the first time I went off and just lost it on the officials you know back then it cost me fifteen hundred dollars but uh uh today it might cost you five or ten thousand or whatever <laughs> you know so uh Every, I think every coach at some point in time goes through it. It just it happens. It's not a, you know, we think when it happens to us, we think we're being picked on and everything else. And it's circumstances. It has happened in the past. It will continue to happen in the future. Hopefully it doesn't happen too, much, too many times. But there will be nights like that. How does uh, how does Spo always seem to pull off the move of just telling the league on the front end you're not going to find me and then kind of go with his his uh, critiques of that may be there but he always seems to put on the pr- the press conference the front end is you're not going to find me sometimes he'll just even point at the camera and say you're not going to find me how, well, this, how does this be, move it, where did he come up with this well first thing I always told him when he does that I said listen it it pays to be cheap that's number one. And uh, the other thing is he has a remarkable ability to control his emotions. It's one of the great things about him as a coach. He, he, he's been able to do this since he first stepped into that first seat. And it's, it's, paid, it's, it's helped him tremendously. And it's, it's not easy to do. Not that many guys can do it. Appreciate the time, Coach. All right, Brendan, the best. Okay, take care.